for me. And then, or no, 2009. 2009, and then all of a sudden, favor was back on my life. And I was so excited for it. And you know what happened? God just, there was such a different way that I handled favor this time than I did the time before. It was so different. Because I didn't need it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I didn't need it anymore. Jesus was enough. Wow. <laughs> and so, you know what? He's like, let me just, and then he began to just cause our house of prayer to flourish. And at this point, I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. Because at the time, I mean, I love to tell this story just because it's fun. But I mean, I we had very unanointed prayer for probably six years. I mean, just really painful. <laughs> ah, I hate my life. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> ah, can I just go do this by myself? You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> it's really painful. People don't, they fight with each other when they pray. They start trumping each other with more understanding of what God really means. You know, that type of prayer. Anyway, <laughs> that, and now it's in a season of such flourishing. But you know what? He's still dealing with me. He's still putting pressure on me and allowing it to get even longer. And you know why I think he's after it? Because I asked him, God, I want to be one of those who love you with everything. Because a lot of times until the pressure is there, we don't know. We, we didn't know that that part of us existed. When the pressure comes, all of a sudden that part of us exists. And he said, I knew about that the whole time. And I knew you weren't loving me there. I knew you weren't. But you know what? I'm going to help you to love me there. Come on. I'm going to help you to love me there. So all of you, in the midst of, in, in the midst of all types of pressures, I feel like the Lord wants to shift your paradigm tonight. Oh. Like, a lot of you just got into the place of complaining. And I felt like the Lord said, because in Philippians 2, he says, you know what? I want you to shine like the stars. I want you to turn many people to righteousness. And I don't want you full of bitterness and complaining and grumbling. And so I, I myself, am coming to you and I'm now saying, switch the paradigm. Don't compare yourself with others and say, well, why haven't you done this for me, God? Why haven't you? What he's doing in you is beautiful. And he's increasing your ability to love him. Yes. And so tonight, what I want us to do is to let go of bitterness and complaining, to let go of unforgiveness of people who hurt us and we're still reeling from it, and it was 10 years ago. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Because that's not why he allowed the pressure. He allowed the pressure to give you more ability to love Jesus. He didn't bring the pressure for you to be embittered for the rest of your life. Come on. Yes. Come on. Amen. So tonight, that's what we're going to do. And you know what? And I, I, felt, I felt encouragement because Chris Berglund had had this dream that we were supposed to enter in. And there was all this fogginess in some of, our, in some of us. And why it was there was because of offense and because of hurt and all of these things. And I felt like God said, you know, Cheryl, this is what I was speaking to you about. Because one of the things that I think is so beautiful about Jesus is that he laid down his life. Yeah. He laid down his life. He is not just the firstborn from the dead, but he is the, you know, he, he himself died. No God besides ours died. Come on. Our God died. Come on. <laughs> That is a manifestation of his love, that while we were still his enemies, he died. Yeah. And that was a way of manifesting love. That's powerful. Let us grow in love and let us let go of bitterness, offense, anger, resentment, whatever that is, malice, Hoping that that person will get eventually what they deserve. Letting it go. Because you know what Jesus' biggest ministry is? His biggest ministry wasn't healing the sick. His biggest ministry wasn't prophesying. 
His biggest ministry wasn't feeding multitudes. His biggest ministry was forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. Amen. That's his biggest ministry to this day. Amen. He forgives and he forgives and he forgives and he forgives and he forgives. He suffers long. He's patient. Come on. Come on. And I want to love like he loves. So tonight, where those places are inside of you, I feel like the Lord is just, I'm going to have the worship team come up. And then a lot of times what I like to do is just kind of sit with the word for a little bit and let it come into me. But I think tonight we'll just have people come up. If this is you and you're like, I want the paradigm switch. I want to shift from a place where I was just complaining, God, why are you allowing all of this in my life? I want to see it now as a furnace for my love to grow, for my love to get long, my love to go wide. It was confined and now it's growing because of this pressure. I can look at it. You know, I, I heard this guy speak this just recently. But you know what happened in the midst of the furnace when the three men were in that furnace? Who did they encounter? Jesus. Jesus. And when they left, they didn't smell like the smoke. No. The furnace wasn't about smelling like the smoke. It wasn't about carrying the offense of the fire. Wow, that's good. The offense of the pressure. It was about encountering Jesus. Come on. Is that awesome? Yeah. That switches paradigms. Because he says he has inheritance to gain from your life. That he can work everything towards his good pleasure for the praise of his glory isn't that amazing to, according to the counsel of his own will so you don't have to point at that person you can say wow god you're allowing this and it's going to make me a greater love and i'm going to love you i might have loved you high and i might have loved you deep and now i'm going to love you wide you're allowing these things in my life that I may love you in greater ways. So I want, we'll just have the worship play for a little bit. And then as you begin to just, maybe as we just, just wait upon the Lord. If you already know, oh God, this is for me, come down. But if you are waiting and just saying, God, are there areas? Just wait upon it. And now I just feel like let the Lord just minister to you and let the switch begin. Okay, amen. Let me just pray. God, here we are. And Father, I just thank you that you're so committed to the way. Wait, I want to say one more thing. This just came to me. <laughs> you know, Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Right? And Peter gives a great answer. He says, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And you know what he says? From then on, he began to tell them how he have to suffer. And guess what happened? They didn't like it. Peter said, no, no. And he said, get behind me, Satan. You don't have the things of God in mind. You have the things of men. We enjoy the promise, but we don't always enjoy the way. And that's where prophetic change, you know, because we love prophetic promise, but we don't like the way to the promise. Come on. Come on. And that's where it gets all funky, and we think, oh, God never did it. No, you didn't want the way. Come on. <laughs> you didn't want the way. Come on. And I feel like he is leading you. He is your leader. He is directing your paths, and the situations you find yourself in, they will direct you to the promise if you stay focused on Him. Amen. Amen. So God, we just say yes to your ways, God. And God, where we come off the path because we didn't think it should go that way, we ask that tonight you would just bring us back into the path. Bring us into your ways. And we ask that tonight we'd be able to let go of offense. We would let go and we would release 
seeking. We would experience your love, God. Thank you, God. Direct us. Say, Holy Spirit, even now, come. Come. If you feel like this is for you, you already know the Lord is speaking to you. Just come on up. And if you are just need to wait a little bit, that's fine too. But just come on up. Just seek the Lord for a little bit and people will come around. I'm going to have, if you're from Pi Hop or you're part of a ministry team from Ibalo, just come on up and, and pray for some of these people. If you want to already deal with the Lord, though, just go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 